We're going to be palpating the sacrum as well as the coccyx in this video. So first thing we're going to start to orient the top, which is also known as the base, the more upper portion, and then we'll work our way towards the apex, which is the bottom. First thing I'm going to do is look for the ilium, as I'm finding the top of the back of her iliac crest. I'm going to work my way down towards the posterior superior iliac spine, the PSIS, which is here. If we went at the top of it and went central, this would be the last lumbar vertebrae, L5, spinous process, and then just below that is going to be the base of the sacrum. Another way to kind of think about this is your lordosis of your lumbar spine, and you're definitely going to be coming out as you work your way onto the sacrum, and then the sacrum itself has a bit more of a kyphotic shape to it. So I found the PSIS, I found the base of the sacrum, and I want to be in between the two of them. So PSIS and PSIS. So this is going to be the upper portion, the base of it. If we go right into the center, instead of having spinous processes, the sacrum has what's called a median sacral crest. So we can actually follow the median sacral crest down. I'm going to be asking for extra consent at this point. You're okay with me bringing my hand a little lower than this? Yeah. So as I go down the median sacral crest, it's actually going to end at two bumps on either side and a little bit of a dip or an opening. So the two bumps on either side are called sacral cornu, and in the middle this is called the sacral hiatus. This is getting very close to the apex or the lower attachment of it. So I'm just going to take my hand and lay it across the bottom here. So this would be the apex versus PSIS. This is going to be the base. So we have the top and the bottom of our sacrum in this picture here. Okay. So as I'm going to go back to the PSIS, I'm now going to go inferior off the PSIS. And as I work my way down, this is called, or as close as I'm going to get, to the sacroiliac joint. So one method of trying to show or prove that is I'm going to place my fingers near the PSIS and the PIIS. And I'm going to try to hook my fingers and grab onto the SI joint. But basically I'm on the PSIS, on the ilium, with the sacrum central to me. Now I'm going to take partner's leg here, I'm going to bend it up at the knee, and I'm going to reach underneath grabbing her knee, and I'm going to lift it up into extension as far as I can get it to go. Like so. So you're not feeling a whole lot here. My hand's not picking up a lot of motion, but essentially what this is trying to say is at the end of acetabulofemoral extension, the ilium is starting to rotate a little bit anteriorly. So that would be creating a little bit of motion at the sacroiliac joint. Another way to try to create a little bit of motion from a prone position is I'm gonna take the leg and I'm gonna fully externally bring this foot out, which is technically internally rotating the femur. So the foot's coming out, but the femur's rolling in. And at the end, if we just step away from the, with the camera just a little bit here, you'll notice that the whole pelvis wants to lift up. So what's happening is the femur is maxing out inside the acetabulum, and then it's then pulling on her whole coxal bone, which is then lifting up the sacrum and the opposite hip. So what I'm going to do is go back to the PSIS, I'm going to hook my finger onto it, and I'm going to do that same maneuver, and as I start to pull over, I'm going to hold down my fingers on top of her sacrum, creating a very small amount of a gap. Now if the person starts experiencing a lot of knee pain or a lot of hip pain, obviously you're not going to feel a whole lot or notice too much. Very small amounts of movement here and most likely not even detectable by your hand, but it's just the theory of that ilium pulling away from the sacrum a little bit. I'm gonna bring her leg back down. So after we felt the SI joint, I'm gonna keep walking down along the lateral aspect of the sacrum, and this is called the lateral sacral crest. So it's pretty close to the most lateral aspect of the sacrum, and this is a big attachment for the muscle known as gluteus maximus. So what I'm going to ask her to do again is to bring this leg up, 
kind of cupping the upper border of her glute max and she's going to start to lift her foot up towards the ceiling and you can quite easily see how the muscle is attached all along that outer part of the sacrum. We're going to bring this back down. I'm going to place a couple of fingers on that edge and go ahead and start to lift your leg up and it's a little bit easier to see my fingers are moving centrally as she contracts this muscle. So that was the lateral sacral crest. Now when I get to the bottom, once you've dropped off of bone, you've finished on the sacrum, the last part of bone is actually an angle. So it angles back towards the coccyx and center here. So this would be the inferior sacral angle. So again, down along the lateral sacral crest to the bottom, the last part of bone is the inferior sacral angle. If I was to travel central from that, I would work my way back towards the sacral cornu and that hiatus that we found earlier. Again, showing you that this is the bottom of the sacrum. You will not be able to easily identify the intermediate sacral crest, nor will you be able to feel any of the posterior sacral foramina. So I'm not gonna really mention too much of those landmarks. So now that we've kind of identified all of the edges, the upper, lower border, lateral border, and the main crests, I'm now gonna palpate the coccyx. Again, I'm just gonna get one more time consent. Are you okay with me feeling your tailbone? Yeah. Working my way down the median sacral crest till I feel the drop off, which is happening right in here. A little bit wider than that, we have again our sacral cornu, and this would be the hiatus. The next bone in line is called your coccyx, or what a lot of people refer to as the tailbone. Now I'm only gonna approach with my hand from above, and I know that being on top of bone is safe versus just pushing around in soft tissue is not. So I'm gonna sink in with a little bit of pressure. I'm gonna move a little further. I'm gonna sink in with a little bit of pressure, move a little further. I'm still feeling bone. What I'm noticing is this coccyx is facing very anteriorly towards the table here. So as I'm dropping off the edge, I'm not really able to follow any more of it. Now I'm going to use my finger as an example. Oftentimes they have this curvature, so I'm feeling bone, and I don't want to push down very hard on this because this is a joint between the sacrum and the coccyx, known as the sacrococcygeal joint. On some individuals, it is still mobile, so you can push down and that coccyx will move. But as you get older, oftentimes it fuses, so it becomes very uncomfortable if you push down on it. Now, a lot of people have probably fallen really hard on their bum or rear, which means you often get a lot of pain in this region because you've landed, possibly even fractured the coccyx or the sacrococcygeal joint as it has fused. So as you palpate the coccyx, just note if it is facing very anterior, it might be facing off to one side or the other. And in some instances, they actually point backwards. So you might feel like the person has a tail as that tailbone is actually pointing out this direction. So again, be very careful. Don't push down on that really hard. It's very sensitive tissue. This is an attachment for your sacrotuberous ligament. So that runs down the lateral edge of the sacrum into the coccyx and is a big attachment for gluteus maximus. So as you're palpating really close to it, again, I'm gonna bend the knee up, ask her to lift her foot towards the ceiling and I will easily feel gluteus maximus pushing on my finger. Let's do that one more time. Good, as it rolls my finger in. And this is also close to your pelvic floor muscles. So if you have injured the coccyx, this will most likely hurt with multiple activities, not just sitting on it, but possibly using the bathroom or standing up from a seated position plus others. This is gonna conclude our palpation of the sacrum as well as the coccyx.